Perfekt. Wir sind live. Dann darf ich äh, vorstellen, Matthias Thüm hält unseren nächsten Vortrag, Gotta Collect Them All, Metrics Easily Visualized. Und mir vorstellen wirst du dich eh selber. Ja. Ja, hallo, herzlich willkommen. Ähm, freut mich, dass ich heute präsentieren darf. Ähm, ich werde den Vortrag auf Englisch halten. Sollte irgendwer irgendwas nicht verstehen oder Fragen haben, am Ende des Talks sind dann meine Kontaktdaten angeführt. Man kann mir gerne eine E-Mail schreiben. Okay, hello and welcome um, to my talk, Gotta Collect Them All. Um, judging by the title, you might have already guessed that I'm a, that I'm a kid of the 90s, but today I will not talk about Pokemon. Um, I will talk about metrics and how to easily collect them with a metrics agent called Telegraph and uh, how to easily visualize them with Grafana. Um, first, I'd like to introduce myself. Um, I'm currently studying at Graz University of Technology. I also work part time for Bearing Point and I'm a system analyst there. I'm in the monitoring team, so um, metrics agents are also something I deal with at work. Um, previously, I've been a hardware and software developer and a sysadmin, and I've been a Linux user for about six years, not only at work, but also privately. Um, apparently, it's not enough to stare at a terminal for six to eight hours a day, um, so I all also ventured into the home lab community in the last two years or so. Um, those are people who have some kind of server running at home um, to provide services for themselves or for others. And um, part of the setter setup I will explain today is also part of my home lab setup. Um, another thing I like to do is play basketball, as you probably can see here. And um, that brings me to my next uh, slide. And I would like to talk about how I got into my sports courses. Um, so as I study at uh, Graz University of Technology, um, as a student, you have the uh, possibility to attend university sports courses. Um, but because of the pandemic, um, many of those sports courses were already overbooked. And in the past, I um, couldn't get into all the courses I wanted to. So I came up uh, with a solution um, and um, used the tools I will present today. And um, you can book these university sports courses via a website um, from the Karl Franzens University here in Graz. And um, usually I had to check um, every five minutes or so um, if there was a vacant um, space um, so that I could book a course um, for courses that were already overbooked if someone just like um, canceled their booking. But since that didn't make much sense, um, I found a solution for this semester's um, course bookings. And what I did was I used a Python library called Beautiful Soup to scrape the website of the University uh, Sports Institute for um, vacancies in the sports courses um, that I wanted to get into. So here you can see um, the two sports courses I wanted to get into were uh, the blue one and the green one. So I wanted to get into one course uh, playing even more basketball and one volleyball course. And you can see here the visualization um, in Grafana. And that was just when um, I got alerted by my um, Grafana system via a Telegram bot that uh, there was a vacancy and I could book the course. So I, um, the setup made sense and I could get into the courses I want, but um, that didn't matter much in the end because I um, there were, the next lockdown came around. So um, there are currently no uh, sports courses happening in Graz. And also I had to um, have surgery, uh, jaw surgery in February. So uh, right now I can't really play basketball, but the setup worked. Um, 
So today I want to show you how to easily set up um, such a collection of metrics, but not only for um, getting into sports courses, but also for um, for collecting system health information uh, from your GNU Linux systems. And for that, I would like to um, to mention some reasons why you would even uh, want to collect metrics. So you could, for example, visualize uh, basic stats like uptime and different uh, statuses uh, or explore usage stats over time like CPU load or RAM usage, disk IO, um, how full your disks are already, or for example, monitor temperature. Um, on different Linux distributions, you might also want to um, to have an overview over um, your package update status or to verify network health. So um, part of my home lab, for example, is um, tracking our um, broadband connection and also tracking the ping. Um, and I will get alerted right away if bandwidth drops too much. Um, so that my roommates um, here will not complain about uh, bad internet connection. Um, it's also sometimes important to monitor critical processes and jobs to avoid disasters. Um, and also, for example, to view or monitor disk usage. So I've set up for my personal um, Linux systems that I get alerted at like 80% of disk usage so that I can uh, check if like the next update or um, I don't know, the next video project I um, work on will still have enough space on my system or if I have to um, move something to some backup storage. And um, talking about that, it's also important to check on backup status. So that's also something you could do with a metrics uh, agent to check if backups um, that you, for example, do with our sync or sync thing um, are run uh, regularly and that backup health is um, okay. Um, for disk, it's sometimes also important to observe temperatures or track them and to observe the um, SMART results. So SMART is the self-monitoring of disks and it will tell you if there are bad sectors on disks and um, you will be able to um, react to certain failures. Um, and if you react to them in a timely manner, you probably will at least not lose all of your data. So in addition to having backups, um, it's also important to track these um, smart results if you don't want to lose data. Um, another thing you can collect is IoT data. So that's something I do too here uh, with my home lab. Um, you can take IoT sensor readings. Um, for example, shown here is an ESP32. So that's a little a microcontroller with Wi-Fi uh, ability that you can run web service on, but you can also con uh, collect um, sensor status. So doesn't matter if it's uh, temperature data or if it's uh, some kind of, of other um, metric that you collect by uh, analog or digital sensor. Um, if you make it available via a web server, you can always um, collect the data with the metrics agent. I will uh, soon show you how. Um, you could also probe web server status. So that's something um, I do with my personal website so that I know if my hosting provider um, has any outages or um, just for like the little web servers I have running at home. So my, all my ESP32s have a local IP and I can simply um, ping them via my metrics agent regularly and also get alerted right away if something fails or if one of the web servers is simply down. Okay, um, what is Telegraph? Telegraph is the metrics agent I want to talk about today. Um, it's free open source software. It's um, developed by a company called Influx Data, which also develops um, InfluxDB, a time series database that we will also talk about later. And it's a metrics agent. Um, it's written in Go and it's plugin driven. Um, so that means the 
the binary itself, so you can use it as a single binary, um, is rather small and you can extend its capabilities by um, adding plugins. Um, compared to other um, metrics agents, for example, Prometheus is one of the most well known. Um, it has a rather minimal memory footprint and I think it's a rather straightforward setup as there is just one config file um, that you have to configure plugins in. And um, with the availability of many, many plugins, um, you also have high flexibility. So I will now show um, how it can be deployed, but later on I will introduce you to some plugins that you can use. Um, as I said, there is a binary available that can be downloaded. Um, I will provide links at the end of my presentation. Um, also, all the projects I will mention um, are linked at the end of my presentation. Um, of course, you can not only use a simple binary, um, you could also run it in a Docker container. So that's what I do in my home lab. And later on, I will also show how it is in my opinion, um, most easily deployed, and that is by Docker Compose. Um, of course, you can also run it in the cloud um, and, and have some fancy Kubernetes uh, deployment, but for most people, um, that will not be necessary. Um, you could also use Ansible roles. Um, that's what I do just to streamline my deployments a little. And um, now let's see some example of how you can configure Telegraph and how you can um, add plugins to suit your needs. Um, the basic configuration is rather easy. So if you um, have downloaded the binary, you can simply uh, call it with Telegraph. And you can uh, just list your input and your output filters. Um, later on, I will explain which output filters um, you can use. I usually use uh, InfluxDB. Um, that's a time series database that works um, pretty well with, um, with Telegraph as they are both developed by the same company. But you could also forward it just to a file or um, to some other um, locations or to some other um, endpoints and um, here, just InfluxDB is used as a simple example. Um, you have to specify a database um, that has to be set up in before. Um, so in this case, it's just called Telegraph. And you can um, also give it lo uh, global tags. Um, for example, in this case, we could imagine that um, our Telegraph agent just runs on a Raspberry Pi and it collects metrics every 10 seconds or so. In this case, only the total, uh, in this case, only the CPU load um, for each core, um, but not the, the total CPU usage. And it just um, outputs it to our uh, InfluxDB running locally. So that's how you easily generate a config for Telegraph. But of course, that can also be much more complex. Um, the basic pipeline is shown here. So you will have your input plugins at the top. So that could be some system plugin like CPU or memory, but you can also query databases or other services. And then you can use uh, process, um, process plugins or processor plugins and aggregation plugins uh, to transform the collected data before you um, use some input, uh, some output plugin to write it to a database or um, to some other service. Um, now what input plugins are there? Um, for a personal uh, Linux system, the first four might be interesting. So for example, LM sensors is a library uh, commonly used to, to get information about your system, uh, like temperature data from your motherboard, uh, from your CPU or, or so on. And um, also the smart status that I talked about earlier. So um, if your disk health is okay. And um, also you can use the HTTP response uh, input plugin to probe the web server status like I explained earlier. 
um, and you can just collect the status codes and um, monitor if all your web servers are available and also check on the certificates if you use SSL certificates for your websites, for example. Um, other input plugins are, for example, WireGuard um, or a Minecraft scoreboard. So even for that, you could use the metrics um, agent telegraph to um, regularly um, get updates from a Minecraft scoreboard or also connect, uh, collect channel metrics from YouTube. Um, also, I want to explain some input plugins I commonly use, which is um, just a simple file. Um, so you could point it to a single file on your um, personal system where the metrics agent is running, or of course, it's if, if it's running inside a Docker container, um, you have to um, mount your file into that container so that it can be read by the Telegraph metrics agent. And there are several different data formats supported. So for example, CSV or also JSON. Um, so for monitoring my uh, disk temperature data, I use a shell script to um, collect the temperature data and then output it as JSON to a file. And my metrics agent will later on read it um, from, from the the mounted um, file inside the container. And I also commonly uh, or regularly pass um, uh, logs and use the, the tail input plugin to uh, just get the newest logs um, inside uh, those log files so that I don't always um, collect like every 10 seconds or so collect the full log file, but only the last entry. So since um, the metrics agent last time checked on this file it will only um, return the, the uh, recent uh, log entries. Um, what's also very uh, useful is the exec input plugin. Um, that means that in the set interval, uh, the metrics agent will simply run some script. Um, so that can, of course, be your own shell script. Um, or it could also be some kind of installed software that should be regularly run. Um, for example, you could um, even use the metrics agent to run your um, rsync backup um, so that you don't have to configure a cron job or so um, for that. And of course, if there is some, some logging um, involved in the, the processing of your backup, um, you could also, also not only run it with the metrics agent, but also um, immediately collect the logs with it. Um, a couple more input plugins. So there are many, many more. Um, another interesting one is the Octoprint API. So um, the first talk today uh, by Gina Hoske uh, talked about Octoprint. So you can get things like um, the 3D printer status um, so you could also get alerted right away if a print fails, for example. Um, I personally personally haven't tried that um, as I currently have no 3D printer at home. Um, but apparently you could also use Telegraph to connect to the standardized Octoprint API. Uh, you could also query um, services like the open weather map or um, query databases that you have running. And um, what's also useful for me is the Proxmox API. So Proxmox is a virtualization uh, engine that many home lovers uh, run. Um, and you could um, just use the, the metrics agent to um, get data from this Proxmox API too. Um, for, oh, I just noticed that I have the Octoprint API twice in here, um, but What's interesting, maybe for some um, who dabble with um, services like Home Assistant is MQTT or Mosquito. Um, so Mosquito is a protocol that's used with IoT devices um, to get sensor data uh, from IoT devices to a, a central um, processing um, server. So you could also use um, Telegraph running on your um, 
on your server to um, get the, the mosquito um, data from your IoT devices. Um, there's also stuff like um, Counter-Strike Go service statistics and so on. So um, I will later link the, the website of Influx Data with all of the plugins listed and you can um, check for yourself if there are uh, more that are of interest to you. Um, as I explained before, there are also aggregator and processor plugins. Um, that's mainly to just um, modify data if it's not in the form you want to send it to your database or you want to write it to your file. Um, you can use them to um, to just modify the the, the form these uh, this this data is in, and um, their configuration can be. Um, is documented quite well and it's rather straightforward. Um, I don't use them very often, but in some cases you will need them to get the desired results. Um, output plugins are, for, for example, InfluxDB, um, but also Exec. Um, so you could simply um, like pipe um, your, your um, output to the standard input of your Linux system and um, and and yeah, use other commands on Linux to um, do whatever you want with um, the output of your metrics agent. But you could also just uh, write it to a file. Or of course, if you have a, a more um, advanced metrics agent like Prometheus, you could also use um, Telegraph on some devices that um, do not have that much mem memory and use the telegraph agent on them, but pipe um, or, or send the data um, to a Prometheus um, running on some other beefier server. Um, you can also um, use the metrics agent as a, and, and use the output plugin mosquito producer, which is like the other way around. So this time you will not um, collect metrics via the mosquito protocol from um, IoT devices, but you will um, output your data as a, a mosquito producer and send it to some other server. Um, the Docker Compose setup for Telegraph is rather straightforward. Um, so I've got it combined with my um, setup for Grafana and InfluxDB as I use them all together on my server. But uh, for Telegraph, you could use um, several images so there is an image that's i think based on debian but there is also an alpine linux um, image that you um, can use if you want an image with a smaller um, size but perhaps you will have to install some additional um, software as the alpine linux image is rather um, rather small and um, you don't have to pass that many environment variables to Telegraph, basically just a host name. So um, if you set the global tag, which I would recommend doing um, so that you can more easily access um, the data inside your InfluxDB. Um, of course, you also have to provide an InfluxDB host. So that could be some IP address, uh, some local address. In this uh, case, it's local. And the port InfluxDB is accessible on, and also you have to specify the database. Um, for other output plugins, you will have to uh, configure different um, environment variables. Um, in this case, we also want to collect metrics from Docker um, itself. So we will mount um, the, the Docker socket um, as a volume into our Docker container running Telegraph. And um, that's basically it for Telegraph. Um, on my GitHub, um, it's linked at the end of the presentation. You will also find a setup for a full um, tick stack. So that's Telegraph, InfluxDB, and Grafana. And there, um, this setup for Telegraph is combined with um, with some other uh, with the configuration for InfluxDB and Grafana. Um, now I want to give two examples. The first one is Docker container monitoring. So uh, some people might use Portainer to get information um, about their 
um, Docker container and their container health. Um, but if you want to have it inside a Grafana dashboard, for example, um, you could use Telegraph to collect the metrics from your um, Docker environment. And um, you will have to configure um, the, the Docker container running Telegraph so that the Docker socket is available inside the container that Telegraph is running in. And you can, of course, only collect information about certain containers um, and exclude others. And um, that's the basic configuration for the Docker input plugin, for example. And um, if you then want to uh, configure the dashboards inside your Grafana instance, um, I will not go over how to set up Grafana because I think there was a, a talk one or two years ago about that. Uh, I'm not quite sure, but um, you will find a lot of information um, online about how to easily set up uh, Grafana. And also um, on my GitHub, you can find the basic um, Docker Compose setup. Um, on the official website of Grafana, you will find a dashboard search. And you uh, see on the left-hand side that you can specify your collector. So in this case, um, I chose Telegraph because I uh, only use Telegraph to collect metrics. And you could also specify the data source, um, for example, InfluxDB, or could also be Prometheus. Um, and you can search for certain um, search terms. So in this case, I wanted to find a Docker dashboard. So um, the fourth one is the one I use in my home lab setup, a slightly modified version of it uh, can be seen here. And um, here, the CPU usage of different containers um, is tracked over time and also the memory usage. Um, and you can also see uh, things like if there are any uh, stopped containers and um, you haven't stopped them manually, um, but perhaps you want to, or if some container crashed, you could get alerted by your Grafana instance via Telegram or whatever. Um, and you could easily react to that. Um, so that's how you could um, easily set up a, a monitoring um, for your Docker environment. Um, for all of that, um, so for the, the configuration of Telegraph, you could also use environment variables. So that's what I do um, as I use Ansible for my configuration. And um, I guess many of you are um, already familiar with Ansible, so I will not go into further detail, but you can just replace the necessary information inside your uh, Telegraph configuration file um, with environment variables and substitute them um, upon running of the, the Telegraph um, agent. Um, another example I want to present is how to easily monitor your own Linux system. Um, that's what I do for most of my personal machines. So my InfluxDB and my Grafana um, runs on a server um, I have running almost 24 seven. And um, my, my personal Linux devices um, run only the metrics agent and send their, um, whenever they are turned on, they will send their um, some, some system information, some, some metrics. Um, to my server so that I have all of them together in my Grafana um, and can visualize them um, all in this on the same web page. Um, for a common Linux system, you could use the following input plugins, um, stuff like CPU load, um, but also your your disk usage, um, your disk IO, um, information about the, the Linux kernel you're running. Um, the amount of memory um, you're currently using or that's uh, free, the uh, amount of swap um, space that's that's available, um, but also information about your um, network devices and also information about processes running on your Linux system. Um, and 
um, on the next slide, you can see how such a, a pre-configured dashboard uh, could look like. Um, for example, you can see the different loads for um, for one host here called Docker Server, and um, it's it's um, visualized over time, and you can also um, track stuff like the uptime or how much RAM is av available for you. Um, and that information could be useful if you uh, if you are thinking about deploying another service to your server, or if you just want to know um, when you had spikes in um, CPU load, um, and you can, for example, find correlations between um, spikes in your CPU load or in your um, RAM memory usage. Um, with your with the software you're running on your Linux system, um, this is another dashboard that you can find on the Grafana uh, or via the Grafana dashboard search, and I also have it linked in my mentioned resources at the end of my talk. Um, another one that is a little more detailed is the InfluxDB Linux Server Telegraph dashboard um, by Kema Ten. Um, you will also find it via the Grafana dashboard search, and uh, it also comes with a pretty good documentation about how you have to adapt the input plugins to your needs, um, depending on what you want to visualize with Grafana. Um, there are also quite interesting uh, dashboards. For example, this one is simulating the top command that you will find on almost all Linux distributions. Um, so with uh, with an input plugin called Procstat, you, you can collect information about all the running processes on your Linux system. And in this case, um, in this Grafana dashboard, the PID and um, the CPU usage of certain um, of certain um, processes is displayed and refreshed every five seconds. So um, you will have this running on your uh, web page on your Grafana instance, and you will not have to uh, use the command line um, or to SSH into your server, um, but you could just um, go to the web page um, where Grafana is accessible at and view um, some simulated uh, top output um, in Grafana, and you will not have to go to the command line to do that. Um, of course, you could also always um, just configure your own dashboard, and you will not have to um, do everything from scratch, but you could also um, just get dashboards from the community. So that's what I usually did, and modify them to your needs. Um, many many Linux systems um, are slightly different, um, so you will have to adapt some input plugins, but that's usually um, easily done. And you will quite quickly, in my experience, in about 30 minutes, um, have the Docker Compose um, set up for all um, three services, so Telegraph, InfluxDB, and Grafana running on your server. and um, then you only have to um, configure the metrics agent. For example, um, you can just run it as a binary event whenever you need it, or have it uh, run as a cron job, or of course also run it inside Docker um, regularly um, to get information from some Linux system um, also on your server. So the way I usually have my dashboard set up is that I have a drop down menu, which can be seen here at the top. Um, here are data source, server, and interval, and I usually have a drop-down menu for my host, and I can simply specify if I want to view um, the information from my host Raspberry Pi or from my um, main desktop or from um, my notebook. And uh, so that means that you don't have to set up a dashboard for each individual device, but usually you can use one dashboard and just um, visualize all these metrics from different systems in the same dashboard. Um, here are the mentioned resources. Um, at the end, you will also find a link to my um, to my blog where I also have this uh, 
these PDF slides available. But as I uh, created this presentation with uh, framework, uh, an HTML, HTML framework called Reveal.js or a JavaScript HTML framework, um, you could also click through the slides once again. And um, then all of these will be um, linked, so you can click on them to get to the corresponding repositories or to um, just the block entries. So, um, for example, the tick stack with Docker Compose is the fork of a uh, um, repository on, on GitHub um, that has a simple Docker Compose setup for Telegraph, InfluxDB, and um, Grafana. And there's also a block entry uh, called TickStack on Raspberry Pi um, that you can uh, read if you want to uh, set it up on your own Raspberry Pi, for example. Um, also, there's the plugin overview for Telegraph. So uh, please, if you're interested in Telegraph, um, go to, to um, Influx Data's website and just look through all the plugins. Um, I'm sure um, there will be some that um, might be interesting to you that I didn't mention. And also look through the InfluxDB and Telegraph integrations um, to um, discover the, the flexibility um, that Telegraph provides. Um, also, um, I've linked all the Grafana dashboards that I've shown. So the first one was the Docker dashboard by user Ejesco. And the host overview dashboard and also the Linux server dashboard with uh, the more detailed information about how to set up your input, pl input plugins. Um, and also the dashboard search and there are um, hundreds if not thousands of um, community dashboards available. And if you're interested in uh, using Telegraph um, as part of your IoT setup, I encourage you to go to Influx Data's website um, and listen to or watch the video um, about the Mosquito integration uh, within Telegraph um, because um, I found that to be quite interesting and I'm currently uh, still dabbling with, uh, MQ, um, with Mosquito and um, perhaps on my GitHub later on um, you will find some repository how to um, integrate Telegraph with Mosquito 2. Um, for the images, you can find the attributions on my website. And also for the source code images, I used Carbon now. Um, and as my presentation framework, oh, there is an A e missing, um, I used Reveal.js. And um, that's it for now. Um, as most of you will be Linux users, you can find my contact information um, by using curl. Um, you will uh, find my email there. You can chat with me on Delta chat or you can uh, find me on GitHub. And also um, you could now uh, go to my blog and read about, um, about this, um, this talk and also find the HTML version of my uh, presentation of my slides and you could also download the PDFs um, from there. So thank you for your attention. Um, if there are any questions, um, please ask them in the IRC chat. Um, I was told the moderators will um, relay them to me. And of course, if someone is interested um, in my personal setup, um, I will also be available on, on Jitsi. So yeah, thanks. Thank you, Matthias. So IRC was, was quite um, um, silent. One question right at the beginning was, um, so monitoring your systems takes very much um, writing operations. Is that a problem for uh, SSD? Um, like the, the, the write, writing the monitoring data on the server, for example? Yeah, I think that's good, that's it. Yeah, um, it, it could be a problem, of course. Um, so usually it would be good only to um, have your InfluxDB instance running on a system where there is a backup. Um, so I wouldn't rely on a server with a single SSD. Um, but for SSD, there are, um, there are some tools that can like um, vary the, the sectors that the that the metrics agent writes to. 
Um, I've never had a problem so far, and I'm I've got my my server uh, running twenty four seven. Um, but I have it running on an SSD, and I check the smart status of that SSD um, regularly too. But I've also got a backup of that um, server, um, of that main SSD, um, so that um, if there is ever a sector fault, um, that I will know to check on the backup and perhaps, um, yeah, just just go with the backup or. Um, so okay. I hope that answers the question. Okay, I, I think so. Thank you. Um, another one. Um, um, okay, it's I'm. Um, uh, okay, one guy he has been um, playing around with with Grafana and and Prometheus, and mm -hmm. not really got, um, gotten into it. And now there's the question: Do you um, um, do you want to or do do you think it's it's intelligent to to switch to InfluxDB and Telegraph? Well, um, at work, I, I often have to work with Prometheus and I find that um, the learning curve is quite steep compared to Telegraph. So if one of the reasons um, the Prometheus and Grafana setup didn't work that well is because documentation seems confusing or so, um, I could recommend switching to Telegraph. Um, there are of course, some um, things that you will probably um, find more easily accessible um, with with Prometheus, but I think that the documentation is um, is is rather easy to follow. And also, since there is just this one um, configuration um, for Telegraph, um, you will never have to look for where to configure what. Um, and I find it also easier to read and to um, understand than the configuration for Prometheus. So it might make sense to switch. Um, you don't necessarily have to switch to InfluxDB2 um, as Prometheus uh, can be. So if, if the, the basic Prometheus setup works, um, it's possible to just use the Prometheus output plugin from Telegraph and um, send the data to Prometheus if it's set up correctly uh, and already associated with um, with with the yeah and it's already set up how how to write this data um, to to um, disk and how Grafana fetches it later on. Um, you don't have to use InfluxDB, um, but since Telegraph is from is developed by the same company as um, InfluxDB, many um, things work quite well together, but you're not, um, you don't have to, to rely on InfluxDB. Um, so, of course, um, you could just use the Telegraph Metrics agent with um, your current setup, and that might make some things easier for you. Okay. Um, one question here you mentioned InfluxDB version 2. As far as I know, it's kind of new and not really yeah. released. Is it um, officially released now? It is officially released now. Um, I do not rely on InfluxDB 2.0 um, for my personal setup. I'm still on 1.1.18 uh, or so. Um, so if you don't want to use InfluxDB 2, I find um, I'm, I'm not sure if I like all the changes, and there were many breaking changes. Um, so it's not even um, that easy to or I mean, I suppose it's easy, but it's not really comparable to how to set up a simple database on InfluxDB anymore to how it was before. And I didn't have the time um, to get into InfluxDB 2.0 uh, before this talk because I guess it was officially released a couple of weeks ago. Um, but of course, you could just um, set the, the version for the InfluxDB image in your Docker Compose file. Um, to some previous version, so that's what I did. I never, I usually never run with uh, just latest for my Docker Compose setups, but I find uh, a version um, that that is quite up to date, and I will only change my Docker Compose file if uh, I find some update um, to be useful and to uh, have some changes that I need for my uh, for my setup. But if not, I 
don't think you you have to run um, the latest version of InfluxDB at least. For Grafana, it, it oftentimes makes sense because I find that uh, many new features get implemented that are quite interesting, new um, types of dashboards, new vis visualizations. Um, but for InfluxDB, like the basic setup is usually enough for my purposes. Perfect. <clears throat> uh, thanks. There was the last question about your, your slides, but I think it was already answered in the chat. So okay. we are done here. Uh, okay, thanks thank for you. your talk. Um, for all the other guys, we'll continue at, at two o'clock with gamification with Moodle, held by Günther Hutter and Andreas Becher. Um, thank you, Matthias. Um, see you next time. Thank you for Bye. organizing. Bye.